<clears throat> talking about mother fluffing stereos, people. This is we're getting into the nitty gritty stuff. This is this is this is like 102. This ain't 101 stuff anymore. Actually, this is pretty basic. I'm Butterball Turkey Jones. Hi, I'm Painful Childhood Memories. Hi, I'm Nicholas Stock, and we're back here with another episode of I Don't Know Stuff, and we're continuing on with the vintage audio stuff, and here, right in front of us, is a very beautiful unit. It's a Marantz 2240, and I picked this up at a yard sale from an individual who I heard him say as I was walking away, man, I didn't really want to sell that. I kind of harassed them a little bit into uh, into passing this on to me. It's a beautiful unit. He's done a fair bit of the electrolytic work. He said he replaced all the capacitors and transistors in the whole unit uh, and that he was just having some, maybe the pots were scratchy. And I said, well, I think I can handle that. You know, that's about all I can really handle. I've really enjoyed kind of cleaning up my 2238 which you can kind of see over my shoulder. And uh, we've just got some real basic stuff to do it, so we're gonna dive in real quick. We'll start with the exterior. Uh, you, there's two types of exteriors on these units. Either they had the wood box, which is very, very nice, and there's we can do a video uh, talking about what you can do to sort of treat or maintain or refurbish or fix some of the issues that you would have on those wood boxes. In this particular unit, this was a unit that was obviously meant to sit uh, with just the external uh, casing, because you can tell because it has the wood grain on the exterior metal, whereas the ones that were in the wood box tended to be black like that one. Let's start with a couple of different things that you're gonna need. This is the holy grail of all, any and all uh, audio vintage repair videos. This is deoxid, this is D5, this is the stuff that they're talking about when, you know, when you turn your pots and you hear, you know, your knobs, you hear scratchiness, this is what they're talking about using to lubricate those knobs, deoxidize, get sort of the rustiness off of those knobs and that's what you use and there's really nothing else. You just have to order it. Um, there is a company that puts them out with a very long, extra long nozzle. There, nozzle. Um, I would highly recommend getting that one just because it gives you access into some of the nooks and crannies that we're gonna see here pretty soon. The exterior here, there's like this little mark here. I don't even know what this is. It looks like it's some old, uh, like an old sticker or some residue, uh, maybe some paint. I'm not sure we can get that off, but I did uh, want to talk to you guys about another cheap uh, way to, uh, to, to get some of the goo and some of the funky stuff off the exterior of your units. Uh, you can kind of make your, homemade, your own homemade gooby gone, that's what this is. It's literally a one-to-one -one mixture of canola oil and, uh, and baking soda. So uh, you want to just kind of mix it up. The baking soda kind of acts like a sandpaper and it gets kind of goopy in there, you know what I mean? And so you just kind of take a little bit of that and we're gonna try to get that off. We're gonna do it live, see if we can work this off. It's probably not gonna happen and I don't look like an idiot, but here we are. Uh, trying stuff on, t on video, and we'll see if we can get it off. If not, it doesn't really hurt anything. It's, uh, you can see it's starting to work there a little bit. And you just kind of go back and forth with your finger, and you can kind of get some of these spots off that uh, are kind of annoying. Um, I don't know if that's gonna come all the way off. It seems kind of ingrained into the unit. You can grab yourself a little bit of, uh, of a wipe there and kind of give it another shot. The oil, it's a canola oil, it's a plant-based oil, it's not really gonna hurt anything. You can see that it already kind of looks a little bit better um, than it did. You can kind of keep working that uh, for a little bit and kind of get most of that off, I would say. A lot of these units, they were packed in styrofoam, so if they spent any time in that styrofoam, uh, there's a good chance that <laughs> that styrofoam was imparted into the external part of the unit and it will just kind of, it just kind of gets caked on there in a way that's, <laughs> it's disturbing. So I found that this, this mixture is pretty decent. Um, you know, again, if you, you know, I don't like to use harsh chemicals if I can help it, especially on units that are 45, 50 years old. So um, you can already see that looks better. And I would just hit that with a little bit of water um, to kind of get that oil off and go from there. But we're gonna pop this whole thing off and wash it with some Dawn, so I'm cool with that. 
just to show that this unit's kind of like been already kind of worked on. Uh, the LEDs have been done in it. Uh, we haven't really tested it, but we're gonna test it out today. Um, really, I think the main thing that this thing needs is just the oxidant and the general cleaning. So that's what we're gonna do. Number one thing when you're working on these units, make sure they're unplugged and you wanna go ahead and uh, check that out. And then once you unplug the unit and you know the unit is unplugged, go ahead and turn it back on again and that will help like discharge the unit so that you won't electrocute yourself. These things can hold uh, a charge in the capacitors. There's, you'll, <laughs> when you open this thing up, you'll see there's some pretty massive capacitors in there and you'll see that that's kind of where some of the fear factor comes from popping these things open. But like I said, if you're careful and you're not really ripping open any of the electrolytics or anything like that, you should be fine. But again, just go ahead and do it again. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Then you know that uh, there shouldn't be a charge left in the unit. There's four main screws on this uh, on the exterior, so we can pop the top real easily. That's one of the nice things. All of these units were literally designed uh, to be worked on. Like, that's what they were for. Like, they, 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 they had issues, they have fuses, they have regular little things that um, can go wrong with them. But generally speaking, everything's repairable on them. And that's kind of what's exciting to me about these uh, <laughs> these these units is that uh, is that you can you can literally pull them apart, do whatever you need to do. That was a sweet and awesome angle for video. All right, we're gonna pop this guy off, and that's it. That's uh, so. There's some dust, <laughs> burn mark from something that happened at some point. Um, you know, you can kind of get an idea. Of, of what may have happened to a unit by looking at the top of the thing, you know, did it get hot here? What, what happened here? Was that a bad day? Did we blow a, a cap or something? Um, once you're in here, you can kind of start to look at different things. You can see here are your big power caps. Here's your speaker relay and different things like that. Um, I'm, again, I'm not, I'm sort of a novice when it comes to this stuff, but again, I'm learning, we're all learning, that's what these videos are about. And so, you can kind of just kind of come in here, and the main thing you want to do is grab a couple of brushes. You'll see I have the canned air here as well. And uh, these brushes are meant so that you can kind of go into everything and just start dusting all this stuff off. And as you dust this stuff off, you'll, you'll, it'll start to come off. And once you kind of loosen everything up, that's when you can kind of go back with the canned air. And uh, there's a, <laughs> a lot of people use the little nubby brushes. They'll come in here and just do this and just kind of swing through. <laughs> you can see here where this unit has some, uh, you know, gaff tape repairs of, of the lamps. That's not uncommon. These, these uh, inner brackets here were all made of plastic and those bulbs, the original bulbs, that they used are very, very hot. Um, that's why everybody kind of goes to LEDs despite the fact that they're not quote unquote original. Um, <laughs> one thing you'll never get from me is, you know, purism to the point of, you know, absurdity. Like it, it, they have, a, they, have, they make bulbs right now that are LEDs and you can get the warm if you want those sort of warm tones. You can replace the vellum, which is the layer of uh, cloth in here. Um, we're gonna pop this front off too because we're gonna clean all that out as well. But um, you can replace the vellum and you can put the warm uh, LEDs in there and they look pretty close to the original. Uh, some people will argue, purists will argue, but they're safer, they burn, uh, they don't burn as hot and they don't put as much stress on the unit. And so when you're talking about some of these units that are, you know, like this is probably approaching 45, 46 years old, <laughs> you know, you prefer maybe not to, uh, to, to stress it out. So we're gonna do a little clean job on here, dress, uh, uh, dust this all off, and then we'll take the front off here in a second and we'll dust that off, but we'll do a little, maybe a little time lapse while we're cleaning here. We wanna take this face plate off um, all of these knobs will pull off. Let's see, I haven't pulled all of these off, so this is gonna make me look like an idiot, but here we go. I found that if, oh, see, these are split knobs. These are come off in two. Um, those are not too bad. I put, if, you, if these knobs have never been off before, you put your hands on it on both sides, right? And you kind of brace it and pull it off, okay? Bump the camera there, let me see it one more time. Brace and pull, brace and pull. And then these guys all come off too. So if they can take them off, you do. 
you don't have to as much on these ones because you do have an access point behind where the knob is. You, you want to take this faceplate off, you're going to hit, you're going to have to take off all four of these nuts. And uh, it's in, uh, what is that? That's an eight millimeter. So you want to get yourself a piece of plastic and just uh, put it in between the lug nut and the, uh, and the ratchet. So you're just not um, damaging or scraping up the unit more than you have to. And they come out pretty easy. A lot of times they're finger tight. So if they're not, that's when you want to get your plastic and uh, just get, you know, you can, you, you can ratchet it off if you need to. Like that one's actually on there. So, so we will lefty loosey that sucker. And you just get your plastic in between there and you, you're gonna, once you've got it loose, you can pretty much just get it out with your finger. But you wanna kinda, these things are, you know, you don't wanna scrape the front of it more than you have to. Um, somebody's gonna treasure this. I would, I've treasured it since I've had it, but um, you know, you can kinda see there's some scraping on this one and few little marks but all in all it's just a very beautiful unit and you know whoever ends up with this I think I know who's gonna end up with this but uh, I want them to be happy with it so <clears throat> we're gonna get this thing cleaned up for them and uh, there you go so another rule of thumb is to kind of keep all your lugs and your nuts in one place at this point should just pop right off and again we'll uh, We'll keep on cleaning. We're gonna do some dusting and blowing in here, <laughs> a little dusting and blowing, and, uh, and we're gonna get to deoxin, and I'm gonna show you how to clean this guy too. All right, the time has arrived. We got a camera up here so they can actually see the uh, pot, which is this one. This one's the, the uh, volume pot. And uh, you know, a lot of times what happens is these guys get oxidized and that's what causes the scratchiness when you're turning your volume knob or whatever. There's a couple of access points, um, but you just want to kind of get in there with this stuff and hit it in the spots that you can get in there. And then you just want to work that knob back and forth. And it almost, it's almost an instantaneous improvement. Like you can literally feel it sort of working, uh, working through the, uh, the, pot, the pot or the potometer, 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 pa, 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 you know what I'm saying. There's a couple of spots that you can get in there. Um, the, the D5 is relatively expensive, so you don't want to go crazy with it. And then you kind of want to do that for all of them and just work your way down. Um, I will say that the ones that are behind this board uh, are a little bit more difficult. We'll show you the next one. Um, the also, other thing you want to do, because you can, is you want to get in here and do all the contacts for this button, these buttons here. So here's all your switches, you want to go in there and do the same thing for every one of those. And there's a lot of access points that are pretty easy to get in there and you can kind of see, and then you just will work it back and forth like 30 or 40 times, maybe 120 times. I'm not sure. There, there's various opinions about that. Um, but you kind of want to get in there and uh, hit all those spots. And uh, we're just going to do that. There's an access point on the back side of the, of the pedometer too, that you can kind of get to. And then down there, is the next one. And it's got these little holes that you can just hit the spot right there and then turn your knob. And again, it's almost instantaneous. It's almost instantaneously better. You can feel it loosen up, let go of all its worries. <laughs> and uh, and that's, sort of, that's all there is to it, man. I'm gonna do the rest of these pots and uh, put this thing back together and we're gonna plug it into some speakers, okay?
while I was cleaning that, uh, the bottom here, you saw me bounce that uh, piece of paper off. You wanna go ahead and glue that back on because that's what that's doing is that's protecting your circuitry on the bottom right here. So we'll go ahead and get that glue back on before we totally reassemble this thing. But I wanted to mention uh, your, your uh, balance slider. Uh, you, what you want to do is you want to get the deoxid in there and kind of work it back and forth just like we've been doing. There is another product called Fader Lube that I believe you can kind of just, it's, it has a little bit more adhesion and uh, we'll, we'll kind of stick in there a little bit better. Um, but if you don't have that, just use the deoxid. And just work it back and forth. Well, there you have it. I mean, like when people talk about, I just, this is a fully serviced Marantz. I mean, that's what they're talking about. They're really spraying some deoxid and they're wiping everything down and they're dusting stuff off and they're kind of like making sure that everything works properly. We've play tested this whole thing. I've just checked all the inputs, all everything works. We do have one, uh, a light out, like I said earlier, for the tape uh, indicator. Uh, but that's an easy fix, and maybe that's a fix for another video. Uh, but but uh, it's a beautiful unit, and will make somebody very happy. 2240, great, great sounding Morantz, right in the middle, right in the sweet spot where you don't have to worry about them getting too too uh, too hot and 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 being too beefy. But uh, but quite enough power to certainly push a, a small system like this. I just have a, a, an LP60 and a couple of pull bookshelves uh, hooked up so that we could do a test on this unit. But uh, but yeah, this is going to somebody's uh, <laughs> new home and it'll make somebody very happy. I, and I, I uh, am stoked that I got to play around with it for a while and kind of clean it up and get it ready for a friend who, um, you know, like, like a lot of us are, are, are diving back into vintage audio and getting excited. I mean, uh, this stuff isn't all that complicated. I, I, I will be getting deeper as we go deeper and I will be, you know, we'll be getting out the multimeter and, and doing some, some of that kind of stuff. Um, I have a unit, a Pioneer unit out in the garage that's, that's blowing fuses and that's a, a prime uh, indicator that, you know, there's a, a transistor that's bad and so we'll have to play around with that. And uh, again, this is just, again, this is just gonna be a deep rabbit hole and you're just gonna work your way down there with me. But um, this is the beginning. And this is, you know, you gotta make a decision. Are you gonna be one of those guys that has a can of deoxid in their garage? Or are you gonna be the guy that, that pays the guy to, to spray your unit? It's really not that complicated. And certainly you can save a ton of money by doing it yourself. Until next time. Hi, I'm, Chunk I'm Chunky Rudley.